Hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the sixth session of the Friendly Beekeeper webinar series organized by Dilma Conservation. In our previous webinar, we discussed about designing a bee garden. Today, we are going to talk about how to handle bees, bee pests, and diseases. Our resource person for the day is Dr. Anwar Indraji Sirisena, who is a senior lecturer of the entomology. Hello and good evening everyone and welcome to the sixth session of the Friendly Beekeeper webinar series organized by Dilma Conservation. In our previous webinar, we discussed about designing a bee garden. Today, we are going to talk about how to handle bees, bee pests and diseases. Our resource person for the day is Dr. Anura Indrajit Sirisena, who is a senior lecturer of the entomology and the head of the Department of Plant Sciences at the Faculty of Agriculture, Rajarat University of Sri Lanka. I welcome you on behalf of Dilma T and Dilma Conservation for today's session. Before we start today's session, there are a few announcements to make. The first one is, if you have missed any of our previous webinars, you can simply visit our Facebook page and find them in the video section. All the past participants must register with a valid and working email address for the webinar series. Since there will be a valuable e-certificate issued for your participation in this webinar series, it is important to provide you a correct information. Please note that you have to be part of at least five webinars to receive the certificate and the certificate will be awarded at the end of the webinar series. If you have any questions related to today's session, you can simply put them in Q&A tab or you can just put them as a comment in our Facebook live video. Please refrain from asking questions on the chat section of the webinar. During this webinar, there will be interesting poll questions and you are all welcome to give them a try to make this session more interactive and interesting. So Dr. Anur, shall we start today's session? Uh, yes, Sarindu, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I hope you all can hear me. Sarindu, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Continue, please. Okay, good. Yeah, as Tari mentioned, uh, we have been kind of discussing different aspects of beekeeping uh, during the um, last uh, few webinars, and uh, today we are going to talk about how to handle bees uh, for the for the inspection, for the regular inspections, and we'll discuss about uh, the pests and diseases also um, that we can find uh, in bee colonies. Uh, actually, we need uh, maybe another separate session for the bee pest and diseases. Anyway, we'll. Uh, try to uh, have a short discussion on that as well now for you know um, for the successful beekeeping um, right we have to understand the behavior of the bees now uh, so far we have discussed different behavioral aspects of bees uh, foraging behavior uh, mating behavior dancing behavior right so uh, defensive behavior we, we talk different behavior of uh, honeybees so you must able to understand or familiar different behavior of bees, right? Um, if you want to manipulate them, right? So if you can uh, listen to their um, the messages, the communication, right? So then you will able to handle them properly. And um, uh, when you uh, want to keep bees, so we cannot um, just keep a colony there 
and uh, uh, let them to maintain itself, right? So we have to uh, monitor what is going on inside the colony and outside the colony and what is going on in the environment as well, right? It's very important. Uh, accordingly, we may need to uh, uh, apply some uh, treatments or we have to do some management practices, right? We have to do, right? Therefore, we have to examine the colonies time to time it's not like rearing some other other animals right? you know, for example a uh, cat or a dog right so you don't want to monitor their growth or anything i mean over time but in, uh, in contrast to that right for how we call you have to monitor time to time right so then today we see what are the things that we're going to monitor what are the things we are going to inspect and how we are going to do those things right Okay, now in the colony inspection, uh, uh, by inspecting outside, right? Outside the colony, we can get uh, lots of uh, information. It's not necessary to uh, open it, open roof and crown, but then um, take it out this all the time, right? You can get lots of hints or ideas, so you can predict something inside by looking at the external uh, behavior of the bees. For example, if you are checking coming bees, whether they are active, right? Still in the morning hours, if they are active in the morning, right? And uh, the, the amount of bees going out from the colony, right? And the pollen carrying bees, right? So I, I have explained earlier, uh, if the bees are bringing uh, pollen to them, so most of the time, uh, they are, uh, there should be eggs, larvae, right? Uh, in the colony and they are well established, right? They are not uh, bringing pollen. If you are coming with empty hand, right, after the rain, so that's why they take in nectar, right? So they just try to uh, survive rather than storing uh, pollen, right? So they bring pollen only if they have to feed. So therefore, uh, bringing pollen is a kind of way to teach the pollen as well progressing right so it's developing or the, or the queen is laying eggs like that right so it's a it's a, it's a symptom so it's a kind of sign of a strong and healthy colony and sometimes you will see a uh, large number of bees in flight uh, right in the in the, in the surroundings fight each other right? so this is the uh, bobbing honey bobbing. you know if the strong colonies are keeping your know, area and if there are some colonies, uh, so so some colonies must come and rob try to rob the honey Right? So in such as uh, you will can see they are fighting each other. Some of them uh, try to guard the gate, prevent it to enter into the hive. Like we have to avoid this. If you are seeing things, what we can do is if, the, if there are some few weak colonies, we can merge them together and make a kind of strong colony, like this, right? Or maybe you can keep them apart from each other, maybe a, a considerable uh, distance. So likewise, we have to uh, take uh, some actions if you see something. Um, uh, colonies there, probably be a honey, right? And also sometimes it's unable to fly. So uh, maybe you have a uh, um, Sometimes bees are gathered in the in front of their gates and try to remove something from their stuck on the uh, skins or the thorax, right? By, by rubbing their legs each other. Right? So they want, they try to remove something from that. That means most of the time some mites are. Uh, their body, right? Or sometimes they may uh, not um, perform as usual. So in, that is a kind of indication for disease. Uh, disease or pest, actually, right? Or might, uh, especially when, they, when there are mites, they, they try to remove this uh, mite from their body. So then you should be very vigilant on that, right? So to monitor. So for to, 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 to see this thing, you don't want to open the hive and anything, right? So you just stand uh, in behind the colony and see what are they actually doing. And sometimes uh, you will see a cluster of bees hang around, hang in front of the uh, gate like this, right? So this is actually a, a, a cluster going to abscond or a swarm, right? Now here, uh, maybe um, they are waiting for the queen to come out because if you keep the gate here, so the queen is trapped inside. So therefore they may stay until her to come. Actually, they will try two or three days and if they, if they cannot, take the queen out, then they will go uh, without the queen. That can happen, right? Uh, or in case of congestion, right? right? When the number of bees are very high uh, inside the hive, so, you know, uh, it's difficult for them to uh, manage. So, therefore, they will try to uh, swarm with the newly emerged queen. So, 
if you see this sort of class in front of the uh, highlight, you have to definitely that. Okay. And, um, and uh, uh, drones uh, or the male insects, right? So male insects are not a common feature throughout the year. But if you see some males during 50 to 70 hours, that's when it is the in is the season for the mating season or the, the storming season, right? When the, when the drones are there, definitely there should be queen cells inside the uh, hive and they are ready to solve, right? Then if you want, if you, if you want to uh, keep uh, all bees in your hive uh, during the honey flow season, you have to stop the storming, right? So then they, that's what you have to do. So uh, these things that you can do, we have to inspect, right? Regularly we have to monitor what are they doing by outside. So far we are creating some looking um, outside. Right? So we need to open the colony. But sometimes we need to stay the inside of the colony. The colony is actually from the inside. Why? So because we don't know whether they are a pest attack or whether they are a eggs or the queen or right. So whether they are storing the uh, like things. So then in, in such case, right, so we have to check inside the colony as well. Right now, um, uh, the previous one, my, I mean, inspection from the outside. It's not take long time. If you can spare, uh, spend two or three minutes within a, uh, with a hive, you can just get an idea, right? But if you want to have a kind of detailed inspections, right? You have to make open the colony and you have to check uh, what is going on. And there we have to um, wear some protective clothing as you uh, wear earlier, and to apply some uh, puff of smokes, right? And then we, we have to uh, stay on two minutes until they become calm, right? And um, yeah, they are ready to uh, open the. So, first we can keep the uh, roof away, right? Maybe you in, in a clean surface, and uh, you can um, uh, keep the brood box uh, uh, there on top of that, right? And very importantly, as you can see here in the, the second image, right? You have to pay the flow box. Right, the floorboard is a very important structure, uh, one of the very important structures of the hive, where all other uh, components are stand on. Right, so there may be different uh, wax capping, uh, mice, or some wax particles, right, and sometimes um, some foreign matters and insects, right, like things. Therefore, at least once in a week, you should be able to clean the floorboard. So that uh, you can use the gate itself for a kind of so very sharp blade lighting, right? Especially remember, you have to. Um, uh, okay. Um, um, now, can, can I have the previous slide again? Um, yeah. Now here you can see we have to um, the clean the edges of the edges of the uh, floorboard very importantly because the mites and thing can be trapped there. Right? Now if you don't clean this very often, the 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 wax moth and things will develop. So what I recommend is if you see mites and other things, if possible, try to wash this with uh, with warm water, right? Maybe sixty five to seventy degrees, right? So you can wash this uh, with very uh, hot water and then uh, we can keep it uh, dry up sometime and then you can uh, uh, place it and then you have to apply some work and one by one we may need to take out the combs right and you have to check what is going on inside the comb so what are the things that we have to look for in combs we'll see in the coming slide so this is the first all questions for today's session the question is, what are the areas that can be observed in the brood frame? What are the areas that can be observed in the brood frames? So let, uh, let's see what are the answers from our participants. Okay, most of the participants think that uh, areas that can be observed in the brood frames are honey areas, pollen areas, and brood areas. And most of the people are thinking that all of these above. So, Dr. Anur, what is the correct answer, actually? Yes, Sarindu. Um, now, as you can see in the next slide, right? So, I think most of the 
answers are correct. I mean, uh, the most of the uh, participants said the all about. Yes, uh, in uh, yeah, here you can see a very clear core, right? Um, in the top, you can see the area where they keep honey. Actually. You can see some sealed uh, cells, right? So this is the place they normally keep uh, honey. And once the honey is mature, uh, mature, so they, they close this cell with uh, some wax cap. Right? And just below that, you can see some pollen storing area, right? They, they store pollen. Uh, maybe yellow color, red color, color. So we keep the store, uh, the pollen here in the just below the honey area. And uh, you are lucky; you can see the queen also here, right? So the queen bee is there. And in the in the, just below the pollen area, you can see the uh, brood area, right? Brood area. I mean, uh, you can find some eggs, larvae, and pupa, right? Open pupa eh? and uh, mature larvae, like things um, in the uh bottom right so and the worker bees will cover this area all the time so normally in a healthy comb uh, there should be ample amount of bees to cover all surface right of the comb because they are incubating literally they are incubating these cells because uh, the brood are there now in contrast to this right so the comb that in the super right just above the brood comb you cannot find this uh, brood right? i mean larvae pupae and eggs you cannot see uh, in the super form there you can find only honey right you know the super super frames are on top of the uh, brood, uh, brood right? so here you can see all these things right so your answer is correct all about i mean you can see the, the honey pollen and brood in a fun um, comb right now, you, now, when you are inspecting, you have to check whether the nectar, now the honey is there, pollen is there, and eggs are there. And when we look at the comb, you should be able to um, uh, observe both sides, both sides of the, uh, the frame or the comb, right? Now, there are some specific ways that you have to handle uh, the frames in order to see the um, comb. Now, in the bottom, you can see uh, one way of doing that. Right, that means just rotate on an X axis, right? Now, if you move uh, the the comb like this, most probably the um, the comb will break because of its weight, and uh, you will be end up with some troubles, right? So because the the comb will be in the fell on the ground with the bees, and then they will become very aggressive, and then they will attack you, right? Therefore, uh, you have to handle it specific way. Now, first, what you have to do, you have to check the 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 one direction. And when you want to see the other other side, you have to lower the turn 90 degrees uh, from uh, one side. Actually, uh, just to explain it, uh, I think you can see the frame in my hand, right? Now, uh, when I keep uh, the frame like this, I can see one, only one side, only one side of this uh, comb of the frame. Now, if I just rotate like this, what will happen? It will break off and will fall down, right? So then you'll be in trouble. We have to maintain the vertical axis in this uh, frame throughout the handling of this form. But we, how we can going to do that? So first you can uh, lower your right hand side like this, 90 degrees, right? So in this way, while maintaining the vertical axis, right? Then you can rotate the co the comb or the frame 180 degrees like this, 180 degrees. Then you can lower your left hand like this. Now you are seeing the, the other side of the comb, right? Uh, now, if you want to uh, come to the, 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 the original position, again, you can apply this 90 degrees, turn 180 degrees like this, then the lower uh, the same side, right? The left side. Now you can see the other side. I think it is it is, it is uh, clear, right? So when we are inspecting, remember, well, we have to check both sides. And when you are handling, now in this frame, you can see some small uh, uh, part here, right? So we, we just use these two fingers uh, to handle this frame like this, right? And we are not going to take them very, uh, very hardly like this, but you will use the just fingers, right? And very calmly and quietly, you can turn it uh, in this way, right? Rotate it and just check, right? So likewise, then you can you can handle it very safely um, without any problem. I think it is clear. If you have any questions, uh, we can explain it again. So then, 
Yeah. So what are the things that we are we want to see in this uh, curve? I told you the eggs are very important to check. So you can see the newly laid eggs are just like that, just just like a small uh, piece of string, right, uh, upright, and it is uh, center of the cell. And uh, just below that, you can see some tiny larvae, uh, which is embedded with some white color things, milky milky things. This is actually royal jelly, and you can see uh, some um, um, de well developed larvae here. So all are naturally in different stages. You can see royal jelly is uh, fed for them. And uh, in the right hand side, you can see the capped drone cells, right? So in the drone cell, you can see some small uh, uh, hole like this, right? And normally it is elevated from the surface, not like workers' uh, um, cells. And just below, you can see the, the, the larvae, uh, the final stages of the larvae. Now, still they are op uh, open condition, right? So once they become pupa, it will close like that. Then, then you have to check whether eggs are there, larvae is there, right? Larvae are there, and drawn uh, or the, the pupae are there. So these are very important to check, right? And uh, on the other hand, queen cells, right? So if there are some, now you can see some queen cells here, just like a peanut size and shape, right? So mostly you can see in the lower uh, area of the comb, right? But sometimes accidentally they may produce some um, emergency queen cells in the in the middle of the comb also, right? Uh, normally you can find it in the lower and sideways, uh, uh, but here accidentally or emerging emergency queen cells also can find. And you have to check this thing, right? Whether queen cells are available, whether they are matured, whether they are still developing or whether some queens have emerged from these uh, queen cells. These things we have to check when you are observing or inspecting the colony uh, inside, right? Because depending on that, we have to make some uh, management uh, aspect, right? Now, because for example, if there are queen cells, right? If, if you want to stop swarming, you have to remove the excess queen cell, right? Or if you want to divide the colony, you have to keep some queen cells and other you, you may you have to remove. Or if you keep uh, all these queen cells for a long time, then several queens will come, right? And the swarming will happen, primary swarming, secondary so likewise. And then the number of bees will reduce, right? So therefore you have to be very uh, careful or we have to, uh, you have to check all these things. And uh, yeah, regarding eggs. Okay, now here you can see in the left side, a newly uh, or young queen, right? Okay, uh, there's a question, right? Yeah. This is the second uh, poll question for today's session. The question is during brood inspection, if you observe that all cells have a lot of eggs, this is because. And let's see what are the answers from the participants. Okay. Most of the participants think that uh, the queen is missing and the worker bees have started laying eggs. So actually, Dr. what is the reason behind this uh, phenomenon? Yes, sir. I'm very glad to see most of uh, the participants are uh, very good at the, at the uh, knowledge on beekeeping. I mean, yeah, the, the, the answer is the, the queen is not available or the queen is missing. Seen, right now yeah uh, with this slide we can explain that so you can see in the left hand side the the young queen sometimes uh, there may be uh, two eggs in a cell or the irregular uh, 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 pattern of laying eggs you can find but when it mature the, the mature queen right so she will lay only one egg right in the center of uh, each cell very carefully she lay that egg so this is perfect right in the middle it's perfect and in the right hand side you can see uh, lots of eggs in a single cell more than one right one two three four like so more than one cells are there and uh, eggs are there and sometimes not only in the bottom uh, surface, right? So they may have lay eggs even in the, the, the vertical cells, or I mean, on the on the walls also, right? Now, this is the behavior of uh, working, sorry, uh, uh, laying workers, right? Now, workers also may start to lay eggs in some uh, conditions like uh, when the queen is absent or when in just, just uh, I mean, sometime the queen can dead, right? So there may be some predator attack or some due to some diseases or some other case the queen may uh, not available 
Now, in such case, if the queen is not there for about one and one and a half week or two week time, uh, the egg laying capacity, right? Egg laying ability of the other workers will also start, right? And then they will start laying eggs. So it is uh, actually a kind of pathetic situation. You know, they can, the workers can lay only haploid, haploid uh, uh, eggs. That means the outcome will be uh, the drones, right? They can produce only drones. Now, in the, if the worker bees are laying eggs, but uh, the, if the queen lays, they, she can lay a diploid eggs where uh, 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 the females will come, right? Or the worker bees will come, right? Now for a colony, the worker bees are the most important group. Uh, the drones, there should be some, uh, I mean, 10% maybe should, should be there, but if they are all become drones, then it's a chaos, right? So that is the end of that colony. Now, remember, if you see a colony with this lane uh, work uh, condition, you have to rectify that as soon as possible, right? But if you uh, if you try, sometime when you try to introduce a queen for a such colony, sometimes they will kill the queen, right? So carefully, you have to uh, work with uh, such colony actually if it if you keep very long time like that that is the end of that colony right it's very difficult to recover right so uh, they, that's why i told you we have to monitor the colony time to time uh, to get an idea what is going on inside right okay um, then <clears throat> yeah some other things that we can observe right in uh, uh, in in internal uh, monitoring or uh, observe, observing, so you can see the number of uh, bees in a colony. Now, in the first Im uh, image, it's very good. So lots of bees are there. Actually, if, if the number is uh, more than the, this, it is much better. But there's a fair amount of bees you can see. So what the idea is that there should be some bees. I mean, number of bees to cover right all the brood area, right? Because otherwise, that incubation will not take place right now just compare with the the the, the below one the, the during the dearth period only few bees are there and lots of lots of the combis exports right so that means there's a lot of lots of opportunity for the wax moths to come and attack right and also you can't see any uh, uh, any brood in the during the dirt period right only few uh, brood you can see and they have not store any honey in the in the dirt period right because during the dirt period they may have consumed all the stored honey Right, and in the right hand side, you can see uh, some due to some multiple crosses, right? So some uneven um, uh, 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 pattern, right? And uh, less number of bees. And here you can see um, uh, some uh, irregular uh, brooding, right? So what we call uh, yeah, you, I mean the brood is not consistent, right? Brood is not consistent. Uh, but in you, if you compare with the first one, the good bee population, you can see uh, ample amount of bees as well as brood, as well as stored honey, and everything is perfect in the first one, right? And if you see some other conditions, definitely we have to uh, take some actions. Uh, if, if it is a during uh, the period, right, we have to do some supplementary feeding. So we discussed last week how, to, how we can do uh, the supplementary feeding and all, right? Uh, so all these are actually kind of cues that you have to use to make some measure, measures, right? Then uh, food availability. Food availability, you can check, as I told you earlier, the one inch of uh, honey you can see in this uh, comb and another uh, pollen row and uh, the brew, right? So the bee bread or the pollens are there. And here uh, in the uh, in the right hand side, you can see uh, the pests and diseases, right? So this uh, white color stuff uh, in the uh, comb, right? These are the uh, symptoms of the back smog, right? So uh, during the dirt period and when the number of bees are getting low, uh, wax moth can attack. The wax moth come and lay eggs on the in the bottom uh, uh, board and then floor board, and then the larvae will uh, grow on the comb in the mid wall of the comb they, by feeding, right? So the silk thread you can see, and this is a kind of characteristic feature of the wax moth and sometimes you may have seen sacbrood viral diseases or infected larvae right some larvae may dead now uh, the pupa i mean they may not able to uh, pupate or they may uh, die prematurely right so, so these are some disease um, larval stage right so these things you can observe when we are uh, inspecting right so you have to check the food availability whether they are storing enough food and whether there are any pest and disease attack 
and whether there are some uh, dead insects, dead larvae, dead pupae, right? So, so accordingly, you have to take necessary action, right? Now, sometimes uh, the 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 the, far, the broken comb, you may have to tie. Uh, on the frame again, or maybe when you are transferring colony from wild to a uh, hive, right? Again, you have to tie up this comb into the frame like this, right? So there you can do with your, one of your friend or sometimes you can do it on your own. So the, the what is important here is you have to keep the comb in right direction. And uh, to tie uh, up this comb into the uh, uh, frame, we can use banana fibers, right? Banana fibers. Uh, um, and then this banana fight, there's a specific way actually that you have to put a knot uh, right, in order to prevent um, um, uh, it uh, falling uh, apart, right? And then uh, once you use the banana fibers, they will, uh, by using their own wax, they will um, uh, fix this uh, comb into the frame. And uh, maybe, maybe in the following day, they will remove all the banana fibers uh, away from this. Um, frame right because they can remove it easily or otherwise you can use some polythene fibers i think then we we keepers have to remove this uh, on their own but if you use banana fibers it is not necessary it is the good way and uh, remember another thing now uh, if you are if you are getting this comb from a uh, wild right and there may be some angle that you can find you know if it is under rock or uh, under a wooden uh, um, uh, I mean, log or something like that there there is a special there may be a kind of angle that you can find, right? Uh, based on the place uh, that the, uh, the original colony were, right? And when we fix this comb in the, into the frame, you have to maintain the same uh, angle if possible, right? Uh, because then it will be less disturbed for the bees um, because they will uh, uh, look more familiar if you use the same, uh, if you maintain the same angle uh, they were in the original. Inside. Okay, then after colony inspections, uh, we have to close the hive and we have to put it in the same place, right? And you can uh, keep the um, uh, roof again uh, on the first. Now, remember, you have to keep the uh, hive in the same place, right? You should not move your, uh, your hive to another place, even for a one meter or two meter distance. It is not pay good because uh, by the time you inspect the colony, a large number of bees in the field, the parade, and when they come back, right, so they will uh, exactly come to the same place, just like we are using the GPS uh, locations, right? Uh, uh, they will come to the, the exact place, right? So if they are not, if their hive is not there when they are coming back, right, so then it will be a trouble for them. They are, now, if you want to move the place, if you want to uh, have another different place, to locate your hive, do it in the night, during the night, okay? Uh, during the day, you should not uh, move their original uh, uh, location to any other place. It is not good for bees. Right, safe handling of bees. Now, we have discussed this safe handling of bees earlier as well. Actually, it is not recommended, right, to handle bees during rainy days, right? Now, uh, the days like this, uh, it's not good for handling bees and uh, when you try to open the colony if it is rainy or it's about to rain right just stop doing that it is not good because they have the bees are under stress they won't uh, they may be aggressive in, in such case sometimes right and definitely you may have to you are uh, protective hours right and approach the beehive from the back now when we are handling even when you are uh, monitoring outside inspecting outside the hive you should not stand in front of the gate right you should be uh, there uh, by the side because if you stand in front, in front of the gate you're disturbing them right because the uh, you are blocking the entrance right so lots of foraging bees will be busy uh, entering uh, to the highway and some uh, bees want to go out but if you are blocking the area some may attack by them right so therefore uh, you have to be some uh, some but away from the gate right maybe in the side and then uh, you have to work with very gently and calm right side and you have to apply some smoke uh, but don't uh, over smoke right it's not good and you know when what what to do uh, if you are st stung with a bee right you have to uh, remove uh, the the stinger using a sharp blade i think we discussed this thing earlier as well 
And uh, one thing you can do is if some bees are sting on you, stung on you, you can paste some uh, the juices uh, of uh, leaves that maybe um, can find in the nearby. You can crush the leaves and you can paste that place because uh, then it will uh, nullify or, uh, or it will um, cut down the pheromone uh, effect, right? Otherwise, there may be some multiple attack to you. So when one bee is attacking you, several bees can attack you because of the pheromone. They can follow the pheromone, right? So you can avoid that by by keeping some uh, uh, something like uh, the crushed leaves of any any plant, right? So you can do that. Okay, then um, yeah, record keeping is also very important, right? Now uh, it's not like uh, having one or two colony in your home garden, but if you have an apiary uh, with large number of colonies, you don't know what are you cannot remember, right? What what is this exact uh, stage, right? Uh, in particular uh, colonies, right? Therefore, uh, maintaining records is very important. Uh, you can number the colonies and you can use a separate logbook for that one and you can enter the data there, right? Or what normally beekeepers are doing actually, they maintain a kind of a, a checklist or a kind of format for that. Uh, there you have to put the date where you inspect that one and uh, whether they are larvae available, queen cells available or whether you gave, gave any uh, supplementary feeding or you divided that one, right? Or if, if you um, uh, uh, did requeening or any other thing, right? So merging colony, anything you have to note down there, right? And it, it is very important then uh, in the following visit, you can easily uh, follow uh, by the activity, uh, that activity. Right, you know what how it was um, uh, during the last. And you can you can imagine now in a apiary like this, it is very difficult to maintain records on your mind. Right, only one or two colonies in your home garden, you know what is going on inside the hive. Right, so therefore the record keeping is very important. Uh, as I said earlier, you can have uh, you can number the colonies and you can have record a separate book or some other database, or otherwise you can keep a record book within the hive, right? Just below the uh, roof, you can keep a record uh, a book, uh, then uh, whoever beekeeper uh, coming next time, uh, follow the uh, information, right? So it is very important whether they have a pest and diseases, right? And you have to put the dates and all these things, and maybe the, the beekeeper's name or something like that, right? Everything you have to uh, maintain. It's a good practice actually. And uh, pests and diseases of uh, honeybees, right? And there are many uh, pests we can talk about, pests and diseases we can talk. Uh, actually, we decide to um, discuss it as a separate, uh, in a separate webinar, right? Uh, in detail, because there are very important um, uh, pests and diseases are there. Now, if I just uh, go through these things, the major pests actually wax moth, uh, mites, ants, and small hive beetles and hornets, right? Now, this pest, uh, major pest, actually, uh, among all the wax moth are very important. So you can see the adult wax moth here. Why we call it wax moth, actually? The larvae of this uh, wax moth is uh, feeding on the wax, right? So the, especially during the dearth period, right? So this is the huge problem in Sri I mean, the most... Uh, devastating problem in Sri Lanka is this wax moth because during the dirt period, these adults uh, come and lay eggs there. And uh, when they attack, actually colony uh, tend to abscond, right? So they, they don't like to stay there when they, they are attacked. Therefore, we have to find some good uh, measures for that. And the different species are there, flower mites are there, flower mites are there, right? So mites also attack in bees. They are actually ectoparasites. And ants, ants, uh, you know, um, different types of ants can attack bee colony. Uh, so I told you last, uh, in a kind of last webinar also, we have to have a kind of stand. We have to design our stand uh, to repel ants, right? Uh, maybe you, we can have a kind of small uh, pond, uh, pond like thing uh, to prevent ants. Uh, but some people I have seen, uh, they have placed some oil or uh, burned oil or something like that. Be careful. The, the bees also uh, will affect it because of this uh, chemical, right? And I, I, in many, many places I have seen the, the colonies have already gone because they apply some strong repellent for the ants, right? So we have to be very careful. And hornets or the wall jacket, right? So they are also attacking, um, uh, so they, uh, the bees, they come and collect bees and bring them there for their, to feed their youngs, right? Uh, so very, very harmful um, kind of insects, right? So uh, sometime uh, very close to apiaries, uh, you can see this paper wasp uh, nest as well. If you find any paper wasp nest, uh, you have to destroy them 
uh, to remove this nest otherwise uh, it will be very harmful for, it will be very harmful for the uh, bees and in minor uh, minor can identify lizards uh, and termites and birds especially bee eaters right and bee robbers robber flies even and spiders right? spiders you know they are the, the general predators right? so they feed whatever the insects uh, they found so actually you want to stop these minors to attack your bees uh, you have to remove all excess branches nearby in your uh, colonies right uh, I, um, especially uh, if there are some branches very close to your hive, you have to remove this thing, right? And uh, for the termites, maybe you have to check very often, okay? Uh, now, how to control wax moth and mites uh, and some other diseases, we'll discuss during next webinar because uh, we have, I think we have to discuss them in detail because those are some uh, major matters in the beekeeping field in the, in, the, in the country. There are some very severe diseases also like uh, brood disease, sac brood diseases, right? So viral and bacterial diseases are, are, are going on. Um, therefore, we should know how we can control these things in detail. So maybe in next minute, we can discuss about this thing in detail. Yes, uh, I think uh, those are the things that we want to deliver today uh, to discuss uh, in today's webinar. So if you have uh, anything uh, asked, I think that's a good time for that. Dr. there is a question from one of our attendees. And the question is, how frequently should we examine the colony? Yeah, how, uh, how frequently examine mean? Yeah, I told you uh, at least once a week, if it is possible, at least once a week, you have to observe the colony, uh, I mean, uh, floorboard at least. Right? So you, if you can clean the floor uh, board uh, once in a week, that is much better, right? Uh, or at least two, uh, once in two weeks, right? So uh, not longer than that because um, Many things can happen inside the now, as I told you earlier. So many things can happen over time. So it's a very dynamic system within the colony, right? Especially during the honey flow period, right? So the number of bees are increasing, and uh, uh, some you know, especially during, I think I forgot to tell you that uh, during the honey flow period, so they they bring uh, nectar and they store honey all over the places, right? So in such case, there are places. Uh, to lay eggs actually, queen feels some problem, right? So she cannot lay eggs because there are no space. All the places they put honey, right? So in such case, right, especially during the storm, uh, during the honey period, we have to give enough uh, additional space, right? Additional space uh, in the brood uh, box, right? Now, therefore, uh, during the uh, honey period, maybe once a week, you can check it and uh, you can uh, remove Come and introduce to the super and try to make at least two uh, two uh, empty frames, right? All the time, try to maintain at least two. Sorry, uh, I was disconnected. Is here? Did you ask any any other questions? I I, I didn't follow you. Yes, yeah, there is another question that uh, Vinavi is asking that uh, can you please explain the damage done by hornet and how to use the queen gate? Uh, can you repeat the questions? I I, I didn't get it. Uh, she is asking to explain that uh, what is the damage done by the hornets and how we can use the queen gate. Ah, right. Now, um, actually, hornets, they, they, are, uh, they, they feed on uh, bees. Actually, they collect them and uh, they, they carry them to their nest, right? And then they uh, let them to uh, feed their youngs, right? So uh, that's why I told you, if you find any hornets nest nearby, uh, definitely you have to uh, destroy them. Uh, actually, in other countries, when they saw them, they kill. They just kill hornets. Uh, when they see around uh, honeybee colony, they uh, they normally uh, predate or they they feed on the bees and they and also they collect them and bring them with them to feed their youngs. So that is the damage caused by the uh, hornets.
Okay, we have come to the end of today's session. And before we wind up, there are a few announcements. Uh, please be sure to register with your correct email address to receive the feedback form. All the participants who have registered will receive the feedback form one day after the webinar session. And please be sure to fill and submit the form. I would like to thank you, Dr. Anwar, on behalf of Dilma T and Dilma Conservation for your valuable time and sharing some amazing information with us today. Thank you to all participants for joining us today. Hopefully the next webinar for the Friendly Beekeeper webinar series, which will be about bee pest and diseases, which will be held on the third, uh, 23rd of November. If your questions were not answered today, don't worry, all your questions for today's webinar will be answered through an email. With that, it is time to conclude our webinar for the day. Have a good day and be safe.